Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm here with Mr. Lobbin himself, Pearl. Who are you? Bowen. Bowen Brothers. Jason. Jason and Brent are out here. Mama Jess. And oh, uh, Coop. Kyle Cooper's out here as well. Let's see what Kyle could do with this bike. I want to see if he can get up this wall. Little B roll of uh, little action shots of Rich. Damn. <laughs> like it's nothing. Teach me how to do that on my 1300? Absolutely. That's rad, man. Oh, so Kyle has a channel too. It's Backcountry Adventure Moto. Yep. I'll link Kyle's stuff down below, but we're also doing a training session at Reverly Peak Ranch. Who's that with? That's with Austin Moto Adventures. And the first thing they want to do is buy all the things you bolt onto a bike, spend the money on the training because that is going to be the fundamentals. It actually makes a difference on these long trips. Spend your money on the training. Let's go hang out with these guys. Let's, let me show you a couple things like the bikes. We're going to get to a vehicle walk around, but I want to show you this Bowen Customs. We met Brent and his brother what, three years ago. That. It's been about three years, and we we were looking for like a flatbed setup, and then Brent educated me on why you just didn't want to go with a flatbed. In fact, I think I reached out to you and was like, "Hey, I'm looking at flatbed," and you're like, "Well, let me show you something." And then it was it was this. Yeah, talk talk me through a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So the biggest thing, um, what Mike was just talking about, is the difference between a flatbed and a camper bed. Flatbeds, um, a lot of companies make them. The bed sits up above the wheel wells, and you have two choices. You either drop your camper down low, um, which limits your wheel travel, or you bring it up high so you have wheel travel, but then you have a large gap over the, the cab of the truck. So with our camper bed, we've engineered it so it stays low. It keeps the camper low, but you can see here plenty of wheel travel, and this is even with 41s. So that's really our, our Hallmark product. So tons of storage, obviously. We have a bunch of different options here. Um, this particular rig has a uh, truck was built by Elevation Off Grid, liquid spring suspension, 41s, five foot garage, kitchen, power system, super tramp camper, 400 amp hours lithium, another 270 from Battleborn in the garage. Um, yeah, so really this is our kind of example of what we can do. So this is a, this is what you're calling the garage, right? Oh, look at that. Our med kit. What do you see the utility in this being most mostly used for? So for me personally, because we built this as a show rig and for a, a company, uh, uh, or sorry, a family rig, um, we're doing some additional kitchen slide out features and then it's the toys. So when we travel, all the kids gear, the bikes, surfboards, fishing gear, um, hiking gear, all that stuff. So for us, it's, it's storage of the toys so we don't have to unload the camper um, every time we come to a stop. So the camper's empty right now. You can jump in right now and have lunch you don't have to pull all your stuff out which is what people have typically done they've had to empty their camper at every campsite when you see this side you're like oh cool it flops down and and then when you open this is when you really see like i got big ass hands but like you see this i mean this is a ton of real estate yeah how much space is this for like a f-350 f-350 with a six and three quarter bed is the most popular truck we do on on the six and three quarter bed you've got roughly seven feet of length in the upper boxes anywhere from 15 to 17 inches of height so you know eight sets of skis inside of that box um, wow it's a ton of space yeah yeah lots of ammo lots of guns yeah i actually use mine for training i've been teaching all over the country with that for the last two years and when i had the camper on it um, I keep all my guns, all my ammo, because all the boxes are lockable. Yep. Yeah. Keep it like, yep. So what's the deal with this thing? What is this? So this is the Super Tramp um, flagship. This is their camper. Uh, this camper is unique because it's built kind of like a yacht, 100% composite and old. Um, this camper has got all the goodies. So we have 400 amp hours of lithium, air conditioning, heat, hot water. We have the bunk bed, shower, um, top stove, fridge, freezer. I mean, you name it, we've got it. So I should get up in there, right? Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god look at this place okay so this is like luxury this is different this looks like a sailboat exactly yeah so they they build this in a mold in their shop so it's not it's not like um wood that's nailed together or aluminum this is a full composite structure that's built in a mold um and then they pull the pieces out and assemble the camper so you can tell just from the bevels on this like this is all 
built into their mold. So the thing that I love about this is there's no wood in it. Um, and it's just really lightweight and it's really strong at the same time. And I like how they do the, the canvas tent component on, on the outer walls like that. Yeah. So when you, when you unzip the windows, you have almost a complete 360 degree view, which is really nice. And then you've got the plastic or the bug screen. So depending on the weather, different, different configurations. Which weird is it feels a lot bigger than a normal one. I, I, I don't know why that is, but it, it, that's very much like the I'm, case. I'm 6'1". His brother is like seven foot tall and fits in here fine. And look how much space I have right here. That's the big complaint with some of the campers. It feels too cramped. This look at it, has, it even has a stripper pole right here. Is that for Jason? Is he doing some kind of, uh, side hustling? There's a stripper pole here. And this is automatic. Oh, uh, it's on a button. Yeah. Yeah, so 10 seconds up, 10 seconds down. I just dropped the bunk bed feature to kind of give you a better idea. So, <laughs> I mean, you could... Dude, you could fit like six people in here. Yeah. And even on the bed, you can sit upright too. Look at this. Uh, oh, I can't... That's the wall. Rad. And what size is the bed? Uh, I believe it's queen. Yeah. And then even in addition to that. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's like molded. So it doesn't, you don't get like dirt and grime. No. With my kids, that would be filled with like Cheetos and everything. Yeah. My kids uh, haven't figured out that's there yet. We're not going to show them. What's the name of the company? So Super Tramp Campers that makes the camper. Yeah. And they're out of Golden. That's just 20 minutes from us in Colorado. Great, uh, great company owned by Keith and Kelsey, husband and wife team. Um, yeah, we, we love ours. I think probably one of the nicest things for us is that button's 10 seconds up. We get to a campsite late at night with the kids, especially if they're tired, um, you know, three-year-old and four-year-old. Um, pop it open, throw them in here, kick on the heater if it's cold, kick on the AC if it's hot. And, you know, it's kind of a little bit bougie camping, but with kids that age, anything to get them out. Well, what I like about it too is you can camp all year round, right? This is all season. And um, this is on your vehicle, and you'll be at Overland Expo West, right? Yep. Yeah, this rig will be at Expo West, Pacific Northwest, and Mountain West. We will be at Overland Expo West, and then make sure you come out and see the Bowen brothers and see all the things they do, which is rad. You guys are crushing it. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah. How can somebody get a Bowen custom? Like, what is, what's the process like? So... Best thing to do is set up a free 15 minute build consultation. Um, you can call our office or there's a link on the website. You can also email info at bowencustoms.com. We'll jump on the call. I'll personally go over the build with you, give you my recommendations based off what you're trying to do. Um, and then from that point, we'll get you pricing, get you in the queue with a deposit and get you built out. Oh, you need a fast rope rent to get down this thing. Um, I'm gonna walk you guys around and just uh, take a gander. Oh, okay. He, he did it on his, he on the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love the fam out here. All the guys are out here. It's super rad. What's up? Let's, well, I got you here. Let's talk about what we did today. What we do today. We worked fundamental control with some of the boys. And uh, yeah, we did some lessons. It was a lot of fun. Hold Good up, times. Baby. What do you want, baby? My truck is under the trailer. Oh, go get Mike Hernandez. He's a rescue. He'll, he'll go rescue. What's the matter? What do you Those mean? guys do it. <laughs> Mike, Mike does it for a living. Oh, you dropped it? Do we need a winch? Mobility team. Here we, we go. So if you guys haven't followed Rich, we, we've been doing a little cross promotion with him, but we filmed that video today that would be on Phil Cross Survival's channel. And Rich is a professional hard endurer rider, but also a trainer. Like the similarities and kind of the things that you're talking about today, as far as like technical training and fundamentals, yeah. building a baseline is nearly exactly how we talk about it. Isn't that cool? It's just crazy. That's why I said I, I love that uh, Miyamoto Musashi quote. Yeah. Which is, knowing the way broadly, you will see it in all things. That's and so awesome. It, I don't know. I, I'm all about the pursuit of mastery. I'm always trying to get better, and I don't believe in mastery. I believe in only the pursuit of it. You, you, can, you can always get better, no matter who you are. And uh, I, I love, I mean, the training side of things, the more you do it, the more you teach people, the more you realize... The fundamentals are the things where riders will feel the most growth. And I'm all about progression. Seems kind of boring at times. Ends up being the stuff that makes the biggest difference in the long run. And you can see we put some pressure on it. I love how Mike's like, now we got to do it as a contest. And yeah. that made the difference. You have to be able to perform when it matters. Yeah. That's where we find out where your habits are. And There's a rock in here. Oh, that needs repair? How did that get in there? Hey, do me a favor. Go over there and find uh, Yoshi. And tell them to go fix that. 
Dude, I love that you have, you have a crew here <laughs> yeah. to, to take care of the kids. Yeah. What's wrong, baby? You want to walk with us? Can, can I? Can we look at your enduro, enduro bike? Sure. Uh, with hard enduro, honestly, the limit of riders is is up to how many signups there are. You know, some of these events there'll be two thousand riders. A lot of the U.S. events are five hundred. Usually, is the cap. Um, hard enduro specifically is about point A to point B. And it's like there's a mountain in between. You. You've got to go up a mountain. There's no real trail. It's just how hard can we push these bikes? How gnarly of stuff can we go up? It's going up walls. It's going up, you know, cliffs. It's going over logs. It's going over rocks. You're in river beds. It's like miles. The races are three, four hours long, but longer distance. It's kind of about that attrition that like continue forward, push, you know, push yourself for four or five hours. You know, there was races where I did, I mean, there was one that was seven hours long, single digit finishers. There's races where guys have to team up, like one year in Ayersburg, which is kind of the pinnacle of hard enduro. Uh, there was, they, they gave out like four first place trophies. Because, oh, rad. I mean, we're talking 2,000 riders enter, four guys couldn't finish the course and they all lifted and they rode across the finish line together. And this is just a 300 stock? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is a stock, uh, this is a 2024 Husqvarna 300 uh stock pretty much like this is uh I, I put different bars on i put different tires on right i ride for irc so throw the irc tires on we, we do a gummy tire that's a pretty specific thing like this oh, rear sticky. tire is like insanely soft what is your ps what are you running on PSA? so the, uh, that's a moose so it's a foam insert oh wow yes it doesn't last super long so yeah we run foam inserts gummy tires whereas in motocross you're going to run a lot harder tire i put different bars on because i'm comfortable with those astronaut bars. and then we put protection on right i mean because your bike does tumble down a hill we'll put a skid plate and swing arm guards and radiator guards stuff to keep it safe um keep it running but uh, really it's less about like power and and more about rider skill and keeping your bike alive um august 30th through september 1st our first moto experience you know, we, like we do mobility experience, what we're trying to teach you is like a baseline of fundamentals for technical driving, getting over obstacles, things that you experience here in Moab. And the other element is survival for state, uh, you know, navigation, all the basics of survival that we teach at a typical overland experience. We're just going to do it on motorcycles. I'm going to learn on this clinic as well. So like I'm going to be teaching the moto side. I can teach all day about fundamentals, control, get you guys better you know get that progression moving but then i'm gonna be right in there with you saying help me survive because i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not, I'm not prepared i need to get prepared because i ride by myself a lot so especially because yeah. nobody wants to push their bikes up mountains all day, so. <laughs> and it's it's cool because we'll learn the same it's like the knowledge transfer yeah. and all of you guys will be there to experience the entire thing it's uh in tabione utah august 30th through september 1st I'll, I'll make sure i'll link it like we did with the phil craft survival video featuring uh rich larson but you guys can check him out i'll also link down his youtube channel and his website in the notes down below but uh thanks rich appreciate yeah. you man thank you guys so much i appreciate it appreciate you all right let's go check out lastly let's go check out this xr 650 and this is the bike this is one of my favorite bikes man um this bike hasn't really changed since the 80s um, this one has changed because Kyle and Mike Hernandez invested a lot of time and energy in this. But this particular bike is just basically a stock XR650 with some added features. I'm going to get out of the wind. Some added features that make it just more reliable, um, give it extra fuel range. And um, it's what we're getting into, man. I appreciate you. I'm going to do more of this because it's just fun and super uh, interesting to, to do vlogs and to kind of highlight all the things that we're doing. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.